Do you want to work with pastels but find them too expensive? Are you wanting to try them without investing too much into getting started in case you don't like the medium? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create any color with just five colors. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. Traditionally, if you're working with soft pastel sticks, it can be very hard to blend the colours to create new ones, which is why you see so many pastel artists with hundreds of different coloured pastel sticks. But it really doesn't have to be that way. Pan pastels can be an inexpensive way to start with pastels because you can buy a basic set of 5 or 10 colours and actually mix those colours easily to create any colour that you desire. I'll be using white, black, ultramarine blue, Hansa yellow and permanent red. And I'm using Claire Fontaine pastel mat as the surface, but you can use whatever pastel paper you have. I just find that this paper allows you to add more layers than a normal paper labeled as pastel paper. Pan pastels are a soft pastel that's been compressed into these pans and you can apply them with a variety of tools, but the most common is these soft tools and that's spelt S-O-F-F-T. They come in a bunch of different sizes and also some larger sponges to use as well. Pan pastels aren't cheap to buy, however, you only need five of them to start with. So compared to a full set of good quality pastel sticks, it is very cost effective. You can also buy single colors to add to your collection over time if you like. So you can mix pan pastels in a few different ways and the most common are to mix your colors on a separate piece of paper and then transfer that mixed color onto your artwork or you can just mix straight onto your artwork. The full set of pan pastels has about 80 pans and that sounds like a lot of different colors but the full set actually comes with roughly 20 base colors plus a shade, an extra dark shade and a tint of each base color. So if you want to recreate orange, for example, you can mix red and yellow together. And if you want to, you can make the exact same orange that comes in the 80 set of pans. From there, you can make the tints and the shades of that base color orange. For example, there'll be an orange tint, which is the lightest, orange, which is the base color, orange shade, which is a slightly darker color than the base color, and orange extra dark, which is an even darker color than the orange shade. And to make a tint, all you have to do is add some white to the base color. To make a shade, all you need to do is add some black. And to make an extra dark shade, add some more black. So to easily create the entire range of colors, you really only need five pans. Obviously, it will be easier and quicker if you have the entire set or even 20 base colors, but you can still create beautiful artwork with just five colors, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So on the left hand side, I've got my pastel mat taped down, and on the right hand side, I've just got a blank piece of printer paper, which I'm using to mix some of my colors on. Some of the time I'm going straight onto my artwork, and other times I'm mixing the color beforehand. With the sky, I'm not too fussed about the colors that I'm using. I just want to get a nice blue mixed in with some white on the paper. And that's because I'm going to add a few more clouds in a little bit later on. So I'm not too fussed that it looks a little bit blotchy right now. And moving on to the mountains, they're looking a little bit odd with the colors right now, but I will be adjusting those slightly. But in general with your mountains, you want the ones that are further away to be a little bit more blue and a little bit lighter and just not so saturated. So you want to save your darkest shadows and your brightest highlights and the most vibrant colors for the mountains that are a bit closer to you. At the moment, my mountains are looking a little bit vibrant in the wrong spots, but I will be fixing that as I go along. So I want the mountain that's closest to me to be slightly darker and less blue than the ones that are in the background. And I'm going to add some white snow to the top of some of these mountains as well. I'm going to make sure that I use the whitest white on the mountain that's closer to me. And then it's going to be slightly more blue on the mountains that are a bit further back. When you're working with pan pastels, sometimes when you use the soft tools, like the, the ones where you put the little tiny cover over the top of the handle, they can get worn down really quite quickly. So I try and save those for the smallest details where I actually need that really small tip. And most of the time I'm trying to use these slightly bigger sponges because you can actually squeeze those 
into a different shape if you want to get into a smaller area. And the reason that I like to use these is because they're not cheap to buy the soft tools and sponges. So I'm trying to use the bigger ones because they're less likely to wear down against my sanded paper than the little tiny ones because there's more surface area. Whereas the little slip covers that go over the top of the tools, there's not very much of the sponge on there and it does tend to wear away quite easily. And these really tiny, they look like eyeshadow brushes. These are really great for the small details as well. And you can actually use the side of the tool or the, the tip of the tool to get into little tiny areas. And these are a bit more durable than the covers that go over the tools as well. If you find that you're really wearing out your tools quite quickly, it might be that you're rubbing too hard on your paper. You really only need to have a light layer and work your way up in light layers. So when, you're, when you've gone and put a bit of pastel onto your paper, if it stops coming off of your tool as easily, just add more pastel and go back into your artwork. Don't try and push harder to get more of the pastel off of the tool because that's what's gonna damage your tool quickly. Moving on to the field that's in front of the mountains, I'm basically trying to get my darker, more vibrant greens towards the front of the piece. And then as it goes back towards the mountains, I wanna make that color a little bit lighter. And then moving on to the bushes and the trees in the distance, I'm just using the edge of the little tiny triangle soft tool. I'm just giving the general gist of the tree. So I'm just using that little triangle tool on the side just to give a little bit of a gist of those tree trunks. And then I'm going back with a few different shades of green. I'm not too fussed about which kind of green it is and just putting in little, basic little dots or circles in clumps. So it looks like the tree has clumps of leaves. Throughout the process, you'll probably see me blending with my fingers. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I'm pushing the pastel into the tooth of the paper. So what I mean by the tooth is that the paper is kind of like it has hills and valleys. So when you apply pastel, the, the hills are grabbing that pastel. And then as you add more layers, it slowly fills up the valleys. Whereas if you put a lot of pastel on to start with, it can fill up the valleys really quite quickly. So by blending the pastel into the paper, you're more likely to be able to add more layers because more of your tooth will show through. And you don't have to use your fingers to blend the pastel. A lot of the time I actually use cotton tips because they're inexpensive and they're laying around the house, but you can use blending stumps or a lot of other different options as well. And then I go back through and add some lighter colors like white and a really light yellow onto those trees just to make it look like it has a little bit of highlight. And then I'm adding in some small patches of bushes in the foreground and going back through with a little bit of white and yellow to make some make it look like there's some patches of flowers throughout the field and a little bit of red on the bushes that are a bit closer to us just to make it look like there are flowers and just give it a bit more interest. So with this kind of landscape, you can pretty much do whatever you like. I, I did have a reference that I was following for this one, but I pretty much made it up as I went along. But it's a good way to practice and play around with your pastels. With this next piece, it's gonna be a sunset scene, also with some mountains. So I'm just starting off with a darker kind of purple at the top of the page here. And it's also gonna have a lot of clouds in it. And if you're gonna, practice making some landscapes or sunsets or skies. It's really quite easy to make that make your sky have more clouds in it because it will cover up any imperfections in your work because you can add in all different kind of colors into the sky and you can have it a little bit patchy and it will look like clouds you won't really notice. So you can't really go wrong when you're adding clouds. So for the sunset, there's quite a lot of reds and pinks and yellows. And for some of it, I'm mixing on my piece of paper to the side there. But I'm also mixing straight onto the artwork and I'm just basically laying down a colour and then if I don't like how red or yellow it is, I'll just add a little bit of a different colour to change that colour slightly. And the more pastel that you add to your paper, the easier it's going to be to blend that next layer. When you first put your pastel down, it will feel like it's scratching across the paper, but as you add more layers, it will be easier to blend, it will be a lot smoother to work with. And on this paper, you can add quite a few layers. It does fill up the tooth eventually, but you can add a few layers before you fill up the tooth of your paper. 
Whereas if you're working on a more slick kind of surface, like a smooth paper, you may not be able to add as many layers. So you want to keep that in mind with what you're laying down, just to make sure that you have put the right colors down first, if you know that you can't add many colors on top. So moving on to the mountains, it's the same sort of theory. I'm going to make sure that mountains that are in the distance are a little bit lighter and don't have as much of a value difference as the front mountains. So basically the mountains in the back won't have as many light highlights or as dark shadows as the mountains that's going to be in the front. So the ones that are in the front are going to be quite a vibrant color, which will bring it a bit more forward in the piece. And again with this one, you can see that my colors are looking a little odd, but I will fix it as I go along and change those colors, alter them slightly to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. If you're going in between colors and you find that you're muddying up your pans or you're bringing colors that you didn't want to have on your tool onto your paper because it was already on your tool, and then you can actually use a rag or a cloth or a paper towel to wipe off the excess pastel from your soft tools before dipping it into your next color. This usually gets rid of most of the pigment, but if you really need a clean color, I'd suggest using a fresh soft tool or one that you've already washed. When your tools get too mucky, you can actually wash them with warm water and soap. Just make sure that you leave them to dry properly before using them again. If your pans themselves start to get dirty, you can use a tissue or a rag and just wipe the top layer off of the pan and it will go back to the original color. If you can afford a few extra colors other than the red, the blue, the yellow, and the white and black, I'd recommend getting a magenta or a purple because it can be really hard to mix a good vibrant pink like magenta and purple can be also really hard as well. But honestly, I rarely need a bright pink like that considering I do mainly wildlife and nature-based paintings. So some other useful colors that would be some neutral colors like red iron oxide or burnt sienna or yellow ochre or Payne's gray. Just things that you'll find in nature and in animals quite a lot if you're working with wildlife but obviously as you go along you can start with your five basic colors and then work out which colors you're mixing a lot and then you can buy those single colors as you go and that will save you a bit of time in the process. Pan pastels are also really versatile. You can use them for soft out of focus backgrounds or for underpaintings where you can use pastel pencils or soft pastels or even normal colored pencils on top. I usually don't do an entire piece just using pan pastels. I usually use them as a base layer and then I'll go on top with the details. So you check out some of my other videos if you're interested in seeing how I actually use pan pastels in practice. And these pans look like they don't have much pastel in them but they're really highly pigmented with very little binder. So you don't actually use that much of the pastel pigment at all. I've had mine for a few years now and mine still look almost new with the exception of the black and the white, which I've used more of, but they still aren't even the halfway mark yet. I also find that they last much longer than soft pastel sticks because you don't actually waste any. You use everything that's in the pan. It doesn't crumble away or the pastel dust doesn't come off of the surface quite as much as if you're using pastel sticks. Another benefit to pan pastels is that you don't have to touch them. So if you don't like the feeling of pastels on your fingers, then it's a good option to, be, to use these. And you can even use the tool to the right there instead of using the sponges. So there's no way that it will get on your fingers at all. And then if you want to add in more details using pastel pencils, you also don't have to touch those. I know there's a lot of people that aren't fans of pastels because of how messy they are, but if you work on a sanded paper or pastel mat, it grips the pastel a little bit easier and it will stop some of that fall off from your paper like, like you get on the normal pastel papers. And then working like this with the pan pastels and the pastel pencils will also help it be less messy because it's not always all over your hands. Unless you're like me and you somehow get it everywhere anyway. So you can see here I'm making the mountains a little bit more vibrant in the foreground and then a little bit less vibrant in the distance just to try and fix and alter some of those colors that I put down to start with. But this is a sunset scene so the front mountain is going to be quite dark because the main light source is coming from the background. I've got a playlist on the screen with a bunch of tutorials showing you how to use pan pastels by themselves or with pastel pencils and soft pastel sticks. So check it out and I'll see you over there.